What's up everybody, this is David Jagno with The Jaggernauts and today I'm doing a quick look impressions video of Cthulhu Saves Christmas. What I like to do in these quick look videos is I don't have a script, I'm purely speaking off the top of my head after taking a few notes about what I liked and what I didn't like, so what you're hearing is pretty much just uh, extemporaneous speaking here. I have kind of collected my thoughts a little bit, but I didn't write a full script out because I feel like that usually comes across as sounding too robotic. So let's go ahead and get right into it. This game just recently launched on Google Stadia on December 22nd, 2020 and is free for Stadia Pro subscribers and $10 for everyone else. In this video, I'll be showing some gameplay from my live stream that I did on the night that it launched and giving you some impressions of my time with the game. By the time this video publishes, I will have already completed the game, which is only around five to six hours long. It is a nice little retro indie JRPG that has a great sense of humor and features some clever little nuances that make it stand out from the rest. Cthulhu Saves Christmas is developed by Zeboid Games, the same developers of Cosmic Star Heroine, Breath of Death 7, and Cthulhu Saves the World. You might be familiar with their brand of classic retro indie JRPGs. Uh, this is definitely right in line with what they've done in the past. First off, what I did like. Obviously, the art style is fantastic if you have any appreciation or nostalgic attachment to 16-bit era JRPGs. Think classics like Final Fantasy IV, Final Fantasy VI, and those sorts of games, as well as Breath of Fire or Lufia or any of those older, old-school Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis-style JRPGs. The art style is very reminiscent of those. Uh, the battle system is a turn-based battle system that does show the turn order on the right side of the screen. Uh, the big twist here is that everyone refills their health after every fight, so you're not really um, restricted in terms of using abilities or items because everything is uh, pretty much single use in a fight until it eventually recharges later in the fight. Um, some abilities have a reusable trait attached to them, but for the most part, everything is kind of one use only, uh, which makes the fights really intense and makes every fight uh, more challenging than most in games like this. I like that in the random battle system, whenever you're on the overworld, you're not just running into random fights over and over forever. Instead, in the bottom right corner, you'll see a little counter that shows you how many random battles are remaining in this region uh, before you then transition over to optional random battles. Once you fulfill those uh, specific numbers of random battles, you get an XP bonus, and then you can continue doing more of them from the main menu. You can trigger them manually if you want, but once you fulfill that minimum number, you will no longer have them occurring in the open map itself. You can freely explore, which is really nice. I wish every JRPG would use a system like this. It makes it a lot um, less time consuming, less tedious, because once you you know do 10 or 12 battles in an area, then you're done. And that kind of lets you know that you are on track in terms of the pacing and the uh, leveling requirement needed for the region. It gives you a good barometer to measure yourself by. Obviously, the writing is fantastic. It's funny, but not cringy, which is really hard to do in a game. I think they have a great balance here, just like all of their other previous games. I really love all of the little Christmas puns, all of the references to their other properties. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, just shameless shilling, which is <laughs> really funny whenever it's done well. Uh, they, you know, blatantly break the fourth wall and promote their other games inside this game, uh, which is just hilarious to me because not many games really try to do stuff like that. And I think their sense of humor and writing style makes it work here. It's uh, something I wasn't expecting quite to the degree that it is used, but it is still effective. Another thing I wasn't really expecting at all was the soundtrack, which is simply fantastic. Are any of them weak to... Oh, weak to fire? Do I have a fire? No. Oh wait, that one healed? That wasn't part of the plan. 238. Hmm. All right, I think Everything like the, the battle music to the open world um, theme songs to the town music to uh, the different character themes and all those uh, all the music in the game is just really really great and I didn't expect it to be quite as good as it is. I, I don't know why. I mean all of the music in their games is usually good but uh, just really stood out here, especially in combat. The music is just really, really catchy and really gets you get your uh, heart pumping and gets you into the into the mindset of combat, which is great. So kudos on that for sure. 
Now for a few things I didn't like as much in Cthulhu Saves Christmas. Um, for, for starters, the, the story is, you know, very straightforward. It's just purely Santa's captured. We got to go save him. We got to go defeat these various bosses in order. Um, slowly work our way through the ranks. Save Santa. Save Christmas. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, which is fine. You know, that's kind of what I expected. It is a um, very short, simplistic game, only around five or six hours long, uh, which is fine. The writing elevates it to a level that uh, makes it more than just, you know, a simple go rescue the guy story. So, it, you know, you can't deduct too much there because they did do the best with what they had to work with. Um, but in terms of the structure, it's just all so formulaic. Uh, the way that the game works is essentially you have the town hub, you go and pick a few of the activities to do, which then, um, you know, spurs up a conversation with the character. You get some type of item reward at the end of it. You do that four or five times, then you go to the next region where there's a large map you explore, and um, there's treasure chests peppered throughout. You do a few battles, you fight a boss, and you go back to town, rinse and repeat. That's the entire game. Uh, which is fine you know it does give you a sense of progression and there's good built-in stopping points so that every 30 to 45 minutes you're you know defeating a boss and you can kind of if you want to take a break you can easily which is nice uh, so all of that's all of that's fine um, but it did kind of leave me wanting a little bit more the scope is so much smaller than all of their previous games um, like cosmic star heroin and cthulhu saves the world so i was hoping for a little bit more just a little more ambition in some ways and the, I feel like the environments, the maps, the layouts are all very, very basic, very um, just purely just flat, linear environments, almost like they're ripped right off of an NES or Super Nintendo game. Um, I feel like the technology is there for them to have done a little bit more. Um, but you know, for working with what they had, I think they did a decent job. It's not terrible. It doesn't take too much away from the experience, but it does leave you kind of wishing that there was more. And then in terms of the combat, I do feel like uh, they could have done a better job explaining some things. There's a lot of icons on screen that I never really understood what they stood for, uh, particularly whenever you're looking at an enemy's weaknesses. I um, can kind of deduce what some of those things mean. Like it looks like one of them sort of means dark energy weakness or earth attack weakness, but a lot of those icons don't match up with your attack icon, so it's hard to tell exactly. Um, like you can assume if it's blue, it probably means ice, right? Or if it's red, it means fire. But um, some of the other ones don't re don't really jump out at me as obvious. So a little more clarity would have been nice there. Um, and then also just the way that the combat works is, um, like I said earlier, it's nice recharging your health in between battles because then every battle kind of feels more important. But then the flip side of that is every single battle feels the same. It feels like you're in a boss fight every fight. Um, so the boss fights lack some of the impact because um, they were just slightly longer versions of normal fights rather than being actually challenging. Um, I played on the middle difficulty, so not the hardest, but I did expect a little bit more of a challenge. Um, that being said, you know, the game's 10 bucks. It's free if you have Stadia Pro. You can't really, you know, complain too much for what it is. Five to six hours of entertainment. It's hilarious. One of the funniest games I've ever played, to be honest. Um, so, you know, you get what you pay for. This is a small indie game, and I think they did a great job of what they had. And that concludes my video on Cthulhu Saves Christmas. I hope you enjoyed watching and learning a little bit about this game. Like I said, it just came out on Google Stadia, but if you are interested in playing it elsewhere, it is also available on Steam and Switch. It is also coming to PlayStation 5, I believe. I saw an article about a limited run physical edition for PS5 and Switch. It'll probably come to other consoles as well, just like their previous games have gradually over time. Uh, they are a small studio, so keep that in mind. Uh, but thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, check out my Facebook gaming page for more streams of uh, all the different things that I'm playing, and uh, check out my articles and all those good things over at UploadVR.com, AndroidCentral.com, IGN, and various other places. I'll leave links down below. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.